This is John Black, Super Journalist. Uh, this is just a disclaimer to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. Okay, originally I was going to make this chloroform from calcium hypochlorite. It didn't work out too well. I actually kept it, it in there after this experiment. You'll see my failure if you want to. Want to. Uh, but I threw this in because at least, you know, I could show you how to make it or whatever. Uh, here's the formula times molar masses times it by what it needed, 3, 1, 1, to get, you know, my quantities. Now, I only had a little bit of Clorox left. So I just, I don't know what was in there. I didn't titrate it or anything. So I just put in, put acetone in a little bit at a time and waited a little bit in between. Uh, well, I mean, not at first, but once I got up there, I waited a little bit, made sure it reacted before I added any more. And uh, I ended up adding 60 milliliters. Um, so you can see here that's of this, that's 81% of what I should have added if I went by these equations, right? So that means my yield is going to be 81% of what it's supposed to be, right? So I times it by 0.81. The most I can get is 64.5 milliliters. Now most people only get like 50-60% or something like that. This is a crappy reaction. Uh, but it's cheap Clorox, you know what I mean? A little bit of acetone, who cares? Uh, it's a nice easy reaction. Now this reaction is actually a test for a methyl ketone or a alcohol that has a methyl group on the side, you know what I mean? It's one carbon in. Uh, that way it can be oxidized to a methyl ketone. Um, well, my point is, is, is when you use iodine instead of chlorine, you know what I mean? Change to chlorine to iodine. Uh, so the sodium hypo iodide, I guess. Uh, it actually makes a precip. It's a yellow precip, and that's how you test for methyl ketones or alcohols that can be oxidized into methyl ketones. You add this in, and instead of it making the chloroform, it makes iodoform, or whatever it's called. The three chlorines would be three iodines, and they precip out into this yellow precip. You're like, oh, well, that must be a methyl ketone. All right, I got about 2,300 milliliters of Clorox, just... You know, the cheapest great value bleach. Uh, that's all I have left, so. Um, I didn't titrate it or anything, but you can see how green it is. I got my stir bar on there. I have 60 milliliters of acetone here. Uh, I'm going to add it slowly, a little bit at a time. Cold everything down. That's at like four degrees. Of course, it's been sitting there a while. All right, so I'm gonna add it in. Turn up the spinning. I'm not going to take long to add this, uh, probably like 5 or 10 minutes, depending on, I don't want to keep it cold though, you can see the ice bath, uh, but I only have 60 milliliters in here, and this should be about maybe 70, 75 milliliters, should, you know, I'm just guessing, because I don't, I didn't titrate it, uh, so I definitely do not have enough here, so hopefully I can add this quick, and then, oh, see at the top? See how you can see now? Something's happening there. See that layer?
getting clear on the, in that layer. Oh, that's very stuff up. It's still four degrees. See that stir board sucking that stuff down. There's like a tornado in there. Well, I didn't even add all the uh, acetone yet, and it's already cleared up. You can see it's, I mean, it's cloudy as heck, but it looks like it's white. So I'm going to stop the stirring. It's up to 20C right now. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to stop stirring and let it uh, settle down, see if see if it's clear or not. I don't know if you can see that or not. It seems like it turned green again. But it was clear. And it's kind of separated. So what I'm going to do I'm going to pour it in here. Just the top half. Well you can see it's clear on the bottom there. There's the vine. Doesn't look like a bad yield. I figure I only put like 60 milliliters in, so uh, it's clear on the top. I'm just waiting for the middle part to get nice and clear. Now I couldn't get that middle part to disperse, so I already drained that out. What was there? As you can see there's any nothing there now. And then I just spun it. You know what I mean? I got this and went like that. Kind of did a whirlpool thing and sucked it down. You can see. I got another like two milliliters or something there, maybe even three milliliters. But, well, that was terrible. I only got about 20 milliliters there. And it's got water in it, so you figure it's probably only like really 15. Uh, but at the 20 milliliter, what's that, like 20% or something? I mean, so I'm going to do it again. Just to show you, just to show you that I'm just an old man. I, I I just can't see. You know what I mean? This time we'll do it different. Uh, I still pulled everything down into the freezer. You see, I got Clorox. Uh, 50 milliliters of acetone and uh, I think it was Nerd Rage. He did his, his is pretty cool. He used uh, ethyl methyl ketone and that way he can make propionic acid instead of so whatever your alpha group is on the other side that's what you get is your, is your carboxylic acid. Anyways, I'm just going to add these two. They both been chilled down in the freezer. Shake it up. Shake it up. Five degrees Celsius. It's only been five minutes. I'm going to just add the other rest of it. Oh, once. That's how I usually do it. It's still only at 8 degrees, man. Yeah, after about 15 minutes, I will put it in a nice bath. It's up to like 42. And it's been about 45 minutes in there since this addition. It's finally getting 
dropping down 27. So when it gets down to room temperature, I'll uh, decant it out. Well, it's been about another hour or so. Got the temperature down to 23 Celsius. It's good enough for me. I definitely got a better yield this time. Oh, well, you can see I put it in a set funnel. Here's the line in case you can't see it. Let me... All right, I'm going to drain it out into the thing. See how much, how many milliliters is there. spin here. I'll let that sit for a minute and get the rest of that out. There's only like a milliliter or two there. Let's see what we got. We got uh, a little over 60 milliliters. It's actually pretty clear. Uh, but there's definitely water in there. This stuff reacts with oxygen in the air to make phosgene, gene, which is really poisonous. And HCL. Uh, so a lot of people put a stabilizer in there, like one percent by weight ethanol. Um, what I do is I just use it real quick, and then right before I use it, I put some uh, baking soda in there, you know, sodium bicarbonate, and I uh, wash it uh, because the phosgene. I'm up to here with a couple reactions I did. But anyways, the phosgene um, reacts with water to <clears throat> break down, I think, into carbon dioxide and something else. Oh, and HCl. Uh, but the HCl is broken down by the bicarbonate, right? It's an acid base reaction. Um, and then you dry and distill it, you know what I mean, when I'm going to use it. Uh, so if you're going to store it for a while, definitely put a stabilizer in there. Alright, it's the same formula. The bottle I used was a Clorox bottle, and I just weighed it. I took the weight of the plastic off and weighed the liquid, and uh, it was 3,466 grams, right? It says it's eight and a quarter percent. I took it as eight percent. Okay, uh, that way I have a little bit extra Clorox in there, you know. But anyways, that gives me 277.3 grams of sodium chlorate, and that's enough for one and a quarter uh, reactions, or according to the equation, you know. So I have enough for one and a quarter. So I took everything and I multiplied it by one and a quarter. This to get 94 milliliters of acetone and this to get the chloroform at 100 milliliters um, I got 60 milliliters so I got a 60 percent yield of course I didn't dry it or distill it so that probably would have taken me down to 50 percent um, I only put in uh, actually I only put in 90 milliliters so I guess I should have taken my um, yield from that but it's not going to make much of a difference 94 and 90 milliliters you know what i mean it's still going to be low low yield always remember scientists great